CFR members, Harry S. Truman Administration, Dean Acheson, Secretary of State, Robert A. Lovett, Under Secretary of State, and later Secretary of Defense, W. Avril Harriman, Marshall Plan Administrator, John McCloy, High Commissioner to Germany, George Kennan, State Department Advisor, Charles Bolin, State Department Advisor, Dwight Eisenhower Administration. When CFR member Dwight Eisenhower became President, he appointed six CFR members to his cabinet, and twelve to positions of Under Secretary, John Foster Dulles, Secretary of State, an in-law to the Rockefellers who was a founding member of the CFR, past chairman of the Rockefeller Foundation and Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, Robert B. Anderson, Secretary of the Treasury, Louis Strauss, Secretary of Commerce, Alan Dulles, head of the Zero SS operation in Switzerland during World War II who became director of the CIA, and president of the CFR, John F. Kennedy Administration. When CFR member John F. Kennedy became president, 63 of the 82 names on his list of prospective State Department officials, were CFR members. John Kenneth Galbraith said, Those of us who had worked for the Kennedy election were tolerated in the government for that reason and had a say, but foreign policy was still with the Council on Foreign Relations people. Quat. Among the more notable members in his administration, Dean Rusk, Secretary of State, C. Douglas Dillon, Secretary of the Treasury, Adlai Stevenson, UN Ambassador, John McCone, CIA Director, W. Avril Harriman, Ambassador at Large, John J. McCloy, Disarmament Administrator, General Lyman L. Lemnitzer, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, John Kenneth Galbraith, Ambassador to India, Edward R. Murrow, Head of the U.S. Information Agency, Arthur H. Dean, Head of the U.S. Delegation to the Geneva Disarmament Conference, Arthur M. Schlesinger Jr., Special White House Assistant and Noted Historian, Thomas K. Finletter, Ambassador to NATO and the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, George Ball, Under Secretary of State for Economic Affairs, McGeorge Bundy, Special Assistant for National Security, who went on to head the Ford Foundation, Robert McNamara, Secretary of Defense, Robert F. Kennedy, Attorney General, Paul H. Nitze, Assistant Secretary of Defense, Charles E. Bolin, Assistant Secretary of State, Walt W. Risto, Deputy National Security Advisor, Roswell Gilpatrick, Deputy Secretary of Defense, Henry Fowler, Under Secretary of State, Jerome Wiesner, Special Assistant to the President, Angier Duke, Chief of Protocol, Lyndon B. Johnson Administration, Roswell Gilpatrick, Deputy Secretary of Defense, Walt W. Rostow, Special Assistant to the President, Hubert H. Humphrey, Vice President, Dean Rusk, Secretary of State, Henry Fowler, Secretary of the Treasury, George Ball, Under Secretary of State, Robert McNamara, Secretary of Defense, Paul H. Nitze, Deputy Secretary of Defense, Alexander B. Trowbridge, Secretary of Commerce, William McChesney Martin, Chairman of the Federal Reserve Board, and General Maxwell D. Taylor, Chairman of the Foreign Intelligence Board. Richard M. Nixon Administration. Nixon appointed over 100 CFR members to serve in his administration. George Ball, Foreign Policy Consultant to the State Department. Dr. Harold Brown, General Advisory Committee of the U.S. Committee of the U.S. Arms Control and Disarmament Agency, and the senior member of the U.S. Delegation for Talks with Russia on SALT, Dr. Arthur Burns, Chairman of the Federal Reserve, C. Fred Bergson, Operations Staff of the National Security Council, C. Douglas Dillon, General Advisory Committee of the U.S. Arms Control and Disarmament Agency, Richard N. Cooper, Operations Staff of the National Security Council, General Andrew J. Goodpaster, Supreme Allied Commander in Europe, John W. Gardner, Board of Directors, National Center for Volunteer Action, Elliot L. Richardson, Under Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense, Attorney General, and Secretary of Health, Education and Welfare, David Rockefeller, Task Force on International Development, Nelson A. Rockefeller, Head of the Presidential Mission to Ascertain the Views of Leaders in the Latin America Countries, Rodman Rockefeller, Member, Advisory Council for Minority Enterprise, Dean Rusk, General Advisory Committee of the U.S., Arms Control and Disarmament Agency, Gerald Smith, Director, Arms Control and Disarmament Agency, Cyrus Vance, General Advisory Committee of the U.S., Arms Control and Disarmament Agency, Richard Gardner, Member of the Commission on International Trade and Investment Policy, Senator Jacob K. Javits, Representative to the 24th Session of the General Assembly of the UN, Henry A. Kissinger, Secretary of State, Harvard Professor who was Rockefeller's personal advisor on foreign affairs, openly advocating a new world order, Henry Cabot Lodge, Chief Negotiator of the Paris Peace Talks, Douglas MacArthur II, Ambassador to Iran, John J. McCloy, Chairman of the General Advisory Committee of the U.S., Arms Control and Disarmament Agency, Paul H. Nitze, Senior Member of the U.S. Delegation for the Talks with Russia on SALT, John Hay Whitney, 
Member of the Board of Directors for the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, George P. Schultz, Secretary of the Treasury, William Simon, Secretary of Treasury, Stanley R. Resor, Secretary of the Army, William E. Colby, Director of the CIA, Peter G. Peterson, Secretary of Commerce, James Lynn, Housing Secretary, Paul McCracken, Chief Economic Aide, Charles Yost, UN Ambassador, Harlan Cleveland, NATO Ambassador, Jacob Beam, USSR Ambassador, David Kennedy, Secretary of Treasury, Gerald R. Ford Administration. When CFR member Gerald Ford became President, among some of the other CFR members, William Simon, Secretary of Treasury, Nelson Rockefeller, Vice President, Jimmy Carter Administration. President Carter, who became a member in 1983, appointed over 60 CFR members to serve in his administration. Walter Mondale, Vice President, Zbigniew Brzezinski, National Security Advisor, Cyrus R. Vance, Secretary of State, W. Michael Blumenthal, Secretary of Treasury, Harold Brown, Secretary of Defense, Stansfield Turner, Director of the CIA, General David Jones, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Ronald Reagan Administration. There were 75 CFR and Trilateral Commission members under President Reagan, Alexander Haig, Secretary of State, George Schultz, Secretary of State, Donald Regan, Secretary of Treasury, William Casey, CIA Director, Malcolm Baldridge, Secretary of Commerce, Jean J. Kirkpatrick, UN Ambassador, Frank C. Carlucci, Deputy Secretary of Defense, William E. Brock, Special Trade Representative, George H. W. Bush Administration. During his 1964 campaign for the U.S. Senate in Texas, George Bush said, if Red China should be admitted to the UN, then the UN is hopeless and we should withdraw. In 1970, as ambassador to the UN, he pushed for Red China to be seated in the General Assembly. When Bush was elected, the CFR member became the first president to publicly mention the New World Order, and had in his administration, nearly 350 CFR and Trilateral Commission members. Brent Scowcroft, National Security Advisor, Richard B. Cheney, Secretary of Defense, Colin L. Powell, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, William Webster, Director of the CIA, Richard Thornburg, Attorney General, Nicholas F. Brady, Secretary of Treasury, Lawrence S. Eagleburger, Deputy Secretary of State, Horace G. Dawson Jr., U.S. Information Agency and Director of the Office of Equal Opportunity and Civil Rights, Alan Greenspan, Chairman of the Federal Reserve Board, Bill Clinton Administration. When CFR member Bill Clinton was elected, Newsweek magazine would later refer to him as the New Age President. In October, 1993, Richard Harwood, a Washington Post writer, in describing the Clinton administration, said its CFR membership was the nearest thing we have to a ruling establishment in the United States. Al Gore, Vice President, Donna E. Shalala, Secretary of Health and Human Services, Laura D. Tyson, Chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors, Alice M. Rivlin, Deputy Director of the Office of Management and Budget, Madeleine K. Albright, U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., Warren Christopher, Secretary of State, Clifton R. Wharton Jr., Deputy Secretary of State and former Chairman of the Rockefeller Foundation, Leigh Aspin, Secretary of Defense, Colin Powell, Chairman, Joint Chiefs of Staff, W. Anthony Lake, National Security Advisor, George Stephanopoulos, Senior Advisor, Samuel R. Berger, Deputy National Security Advisor, R. James Woolsey, CIA Director, William J. Crow Jr., Chairman of the Foreign Intelligence Advisory Board, Lloyd Benson, Former Member, Secretary of Treasury, Roger C. Altman, Deputy Secretary of Treasury, Henry G. Cisneros, Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, Bruce Babbitt, Secretary of the Interior, Peter Tarnoff, Under Secretary of State for International Security of Affairs, Winston Lord, Assistant Secretary of State for East Asian and Pacific Affairs, Strobe Talbot, Aide Coordinator to the Commonwealth of Independent States, Alan Greenspan, Chairman of the Federal Reserve System, Walter Mondale, U.S., Ambassador to Japan, Ronald H. Brown, Secretary of Commerce, Franklin D. Raines, Economics and International Trade, George W. Bush Administration, Richard Cheney, Vice President, Former Secretary of Defense under President Bush, Colin Powell, Secretary of State, Former Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff under Presidents Bush and Clinton, Condoleezza Rice, National Security Advisor, Former Member of President Bush's National Security Council, Robert B. Zellick, U.S., Trade Representative, Former Under Secretary of State in the Bush Administration, Elaine Zhao, Secretary of Labor, Brent Scowcroft, Chairman of the Foreign Intelligence Advisory Board, Former National Security Advisor to President Bush, Richard Haas, Director of Policy Planning at the State Department and Ambassador at Large, Henry Kissinger, Pentagon Defense Policy Board, Former Secretary of State under Presidents Nixon and Ford, 
Robert Blackwell, U.S., Ambassador to India, former member of President Bush's National Security Council, Stephen Friedman, Senior White House Economic Advisor, Stephen Hadley, Deputy National Security Advisor, former Assistant Secretary of Defense under Cheney, Richard Perrell, Chairman of Pentagon Defense Policy Board, former Assistant Secretary of Defense in the Reagan Administration, Paul Wolfowitz, Assistant Secretary of Defense, former Assistant Secretary of State in the Reagan Administration and former Under Secretary of Defense in the Bush Administration, Dov S. Zakheim, Under Secretary of Defense, Comptroller, former Under Secretary of Defense in the Reagan Administration, I. Lewis Libby, Chief of Staff for the Vice President, former Deputy Under Secretary of Defense. The Christian Science Monitor said that almost half of the council members have been invited to assume official government positions or to act as consultants at one time or another. Quat. The council accepts only American citizens, and has a membership of about 3,600, including influential bankers, corporate officers, and leading government officials who have been significantly affecting domestic and foreign policy for the past 30 years. Every member had been hand-picked by David Rockefeller, who heads the inner circle of the CFR. It is believed that the hierarchy of their inner circle includes descendants of the original Illuminati conspirators, who have Americanized their original family names in order to conceal that fact. Some of the CFR directors have been, Walter Lippmann, 1932-37, Adlai Stevenson, 1958-62, Cyrus Vance, 1968-76, 1981-87, Zbigniew Brzezinski, 1972-77, Robert O. Anderson, 1974-80, Paul Volcker, 1975-79, Theodore M. Hesburgh, 1926-85, Lane Kirkland, 1976-86, George H. W. Bush, 1977-79, Henry Kissinger, 1977-81, David Rockefeller, 1949-85, George Schultz, 1980-88, Alan Greenspan, 1982-88, Brent Scowcroft, 1983-89, Jean J. Kirkpatrick, 1985, Warren M. Christopher, 1982-91 and Richard Cheney, 1987-89. Among the members of the media who have been in the CFR, William Paley, CBS, Dan Rather, CBS, Harry Reasoner, CBS, Rune Arledge, ABC, Bill Moyers, NBC, Tom Brokaw, NBC, John Chancellor, NBC, Marvin Kalb, CBS, Irving Levine, PBS, David Brinkley, ABC, John Scully, ABC, Barbara Walters, ABC, William Buckley, PBS, George Stephanopoulos, ABC, Daniel Shore, CBS, Robert McNeil, PBS, Jim Lehrer, PBS, Diane Sawyer, ABC, and Hotting Carter III, ABC. Some of the college presidents that have been CFR members, Michael I. Sovern, Columbia University, Frank H. T. Rhodes, Cornell University, John Berdamus, New York University, Alice S. Ilchman, Sarah Lawrence College, Theodore M. Hesburg, Notre Dame University, Donald Kennedy, Stanford University, Benno J. Schmidt Jr., Yale University, Hannah Holborn Gray, University of Chicago, Stephen Muller, Johns Hopkins University, Howard R. Swearer, Brown University, Donna E. Shalala, University of Wisconsin, and John P. Wilson, Washington and Lee University. Some of the major newspapers, news services and media groups that have been controlled or influenced by the CFR, New York Times, Salzburgers, James Reston, Max Frankel, Harrison Salisbury, Washington Post, Frederick S. Beebe, Catherine Graham, Osborne Elliott, Wall Street Journal, Boston Globe, Baltimore Sun, Chicago Sun-Times, LA, Times Syndicate, Houston Post, Minneapolis Star Tribune, Arkansas Gazette, Des Moines Register, and Tribune, Louisville Courier, Associated Press, United Press International, Reuters News Service, and Gannett Company, publisher of USA Today, and 90 other daily papers, plus 40 weeklies, and also owns 15 radio stations, 8 TV stations, and 40,000 billboards. In 1896, Alfred Oakes bought the New York Times, with the financial backing of J.P. Morgan, C.F.R., August Belmont, Rothschild agent, and Jacob Schiff, Kuhn, Loeb. It later passed to the control of Arthur Oakes Salzberger, who was also a C.F.R. member. Eugene Meyer, a C.F.R. member, bought the Washington Post in 1933. Today it is run by his daughter, Catherine Graham, also a member of the CFR. Some of the magazines that have been controlled or influenced by the CFR, Time, founded by CFR member Henry Luce, who also published Fortune, Life, Money, People, Entertainment Weekly, and Sports Illustrated, and Headley Donovan, Newsweek, owned by the Washington Post, W. Avril Harriman, Roland Harriman, and Louis W. Douglas, Business Week, 
U.S., News and World Report, Saturday Review, National Review, Reader's Digest, Atlantic Monthly, McCall's, Forbes, Look, and Harper's Magazine. Some of the publishers that have been controlled or influenced by the CFR, Macmillan, Random House, Simon, and Schuster, McGraw-Hill, Harper Brothers, Harper, and Rowe, Yale University Press, Little Brown and Company, Viking Press, and Cowles Publishing. G. Gordon Liddy, former Nixon staffer, who later became a talk show pundit, laughed off the idea of a new world order, saying that there are so many different organizations working toward their own goals of a one-world government, that they cancel each other out. Not the case. You have seen that their tentacles are very far-reaching, as far as the government and the media. However, as outlined below, you will see that the CFR has a heavy cross-membership with many groups, as well as a cross-membership among the directorship of many corporate boards, and this is a good indication that their efforts are concerted. Some of the organizations and think tanks that have been controlled or influenced by the CFR, Brookings Institute, Rand Corporation, American Assembly, Foreign Policy Association, a more open sister to the CFR, which CFR member Raymond Fostick, Under Secretary of General to the League of Nations, helped create, World Affairs Council, Business Advisory Council, Committee for Economic Development, National Foreign Trade Council, National Bureau of Economic Research, National Association of Manufacturers, National Industrial Conference Board, Americans for Democratic Action, Hudson Institute, Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, Institute for Defense Analysis, World Peace Foundation, United Nations Association, National Planning Association, Center for Inter-American Relations, Free Europe Committee, Atlantic Council of the U.S., founded in 1961 by CFR member Christian Herter, Council for Latin America, National Committee on U.S.-China Relations, African American Institute, and the Middle East Institute. Some of the many companies that have been controlled or influenced by the CFR, Morgan, Stanley, Kuhn, Loeb, Lehman Brothers, Bank of America, Chase Manhattan Bank, J. P. Morgan & Co., First National City Bank, Brown Brothers, Harriman, and Co., Bank of New York, City Bank slash City Corp., Chemical Bank, Bankers Trust of New York, Manufacturers Hanover, Morgan Guarantee, Merrill Lynch, Equitable Life, New York Life, Metropolitan Life, Mutual of New York, Prudential Insurance, Phillips Petroleum, Chevron, Exxon, Mobile, Atlantic Richfield, Arco, Texaco, IBM, Xerox Corporation, AT&T, General Electric, ITT Corporation, Dow Chemical, E. I. DuPont, BMW of North America, Mitsubishi, Toyota Motor Corporation, General Motors, Ford Motor Company, Chrysler, U.S. Steel, Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, St. Lauder, Avon Products, R. J. R. Nabisco, R. H. Macy, Federated Department Stores, Gimbal Brothers, J. C. Penny Company, Sears, Roebuck & Company, May Department Stores, Allied Stores, American Express, PepsiCo, Coca-Cola, Pfizer, Bristol-Myers Squibb, Hilton Hotels, and American Airlines. In September, 1922, when the CFR began publishing its quarterly magazine, Foreign Affairs, the editorial stated that its purpose was to guide American opinion. By 1924, it had established itself as the most authoritative American review dealing with international relations. This highly influential magazine has been the leading publication of its kind, and has a circulation of over 75,000. Reading this publication can be highly informative as to the views of its members. For instance, the spring, 1991 issue, called for a UN standing army, consisting of military personnel from all the member nations, directly under the control of the UN Security Council. A major source of their funding, since 1953, stems from providing a corporate service to over 100 companies for a minimum fee of $1,000, that furnishes subscribers with inside information on what is going on politically and financially, both internationally and domestically, by providing free consultation, use of their extensive library, a subscription to foreign affairs, and by holding seminars on reports and research done for the executive branch. They also publish books and pamphlets, and have regular dinner meetings to allow speakers and members to present positions, award study fellowships to scholars, promote regional meetings and stage roundtable discussion meetings. Being that the Council on Foreign Relations was able to infiltrate our government, it is no wonder that our country has been traveling on the course that it has. The moral, educational and financial decline of this nation has been no accident. It has been due to a carefully contrived plot on behalf of these conspirators, who will be satisfied with nothing less than a one-world government. And it is coming to that. As each year goes by, the momentum is picking up, and it is becoming increasingly clear, what road our government is taking. 
the proponents of one world government are becoming less secretive, as evidenced by George Bush's talk of a new world order. Quat. The reason for that is that they feel it is too late for their plans to be stopped. They have become so entrenched in our government, our financial structure, and our commerce, that they probably do control this country, if not the world. In light of this, it seems that it will be only a matter of time before their plans are fully implemented.